Number 53, a 12.0 gram sample of a non-electrolyte is dissolved in 80.0 grams of water. The solution freezes at negative 1.94 degrees Celsius. Assuming ideal solution behavior, calculate the molar mass of this substance. Okay, so a lot to unpack here, right? But at the end of the day, we have to calculate the molar mass. Now a molar mass of any substance is just a fraction, right? A molar mass is always going to be the grams of a certain compound divided by the moles. And when you're trying to find a molar mass, it's, it's of one substance, so either one compound, one molecule, or um, you know one element. Now they're just saying calculate the molar mass of this certain substance. We don't really know what this substance is, whether it's a compound or a molecule or just an element, right? All that they told us was that this substance, this sample, is a non-electrolyte and it's being dissolved in water. Okay, so maybe I'll just say, let's just assume it's a compound, right? So we're going to take the grams of that compound, right, that substance, and divide it by the moles. Now let's see, maybe they gave us some information already, right? They did tell us that we had 12 gram sample of this substance. So I already know that the grams of this is 12, 12.0 grams. Do I know the moles? If we know the moles, then we can just plug this in and that'd be the end of the video. What a, what a quick video, right? But if I'm reading this, it says, okay, 12 grams is being dissolved in 80 grams. It freezes at negative 1.94. Eh, didn't give me the moles, but that's okay. We could find it out. Now, we're dealing with a type of solution here because we're uh, dunking one substance into a liquid substance, right? In this case, we're dunking this non-electrolyte into water. So from there, we make a total solution, and a solution is always made up of a solute and a solvent. The solute is always the small amount of solid, generally, that is being dissolved or dunked into the solvent. Now, in this case, we have 12 grams of the substance being dunked in or dissolved in the water. So by this, uh, you know, by these wordings, the 12 grams of the non-electrolyte has to be the solute and the water has to be the solvent. And together, they make up that one happy solution. So we're dealing with solutions, we've got solute solvents, we're talking about freezing points. So there's generally only one formula that comes to mind when we're dealing with freezing points with solutions. And that's this formula right here. Delta T F equals KF times M times I. So let's just unpack all this, right? So we have this triangle TF, that's delta, and the triangle just means the change. So we have a change in a freezing point because we're dealing with freezing. It's said that, you know, the solution was freezing. So we have a change in the freezing point equals the freezing point depression constant value. And just know that this KF value is solely reliant on the solvent. Now, in this case, we already stated that the water, H2O, was the solvent. So I had to go in the textbook to find out what that KF value was. We can't do this question without knowing that KF value. So they probably assumed that you were going to go find that number, but maybe on a test or quiz, um, they would give you that number. So this is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molality, and we have the KF value. Now, Molality, which is this cute little italicized M, right? Uh, they didn't tell us that we had a molality here. And the I value stands for the Vant Hoff factor. Now, this is highly reliant on whether your uh, substance that's being dunked in the water, in this case, is a electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. Now, they specifically said that it's a non-electrolyte, which means that that sample is not going to break up into any of its ions, which means that it's just going to be one whole substance chilling in the water. And if it's one whole substance keying on that one, 
the I value would be 1. So anytime that they say that it's a non-electrolyte, you know that you have an I value of 1. So we have this. So we're getting closer. What are we going to solve for? Well, let's see. Change in the freezing point. Now, they did state that, you know, this new solution froze at negative 1.94 degrees Celsius. But the thing is, if you're going to find a change, you have to know what that, that pure solvent would have froze at without the solution or without the added solute. So that's where we have to know that the pure freezing point of the water, the solvent, is zero degrees Celsius. And just know that when you're doing a freezing point, the freezing point of your solution is always going to be lower than the normal. So if you get a freezing point that's higher than your pure normal freezing point, something went wrong, go back. That's like a good trick for, you know, multiple choice questions. But now what would be that change? Well, if we know that the pure uh, freezing point for water is zero degrees Celsius and the solution one, is, what is it, negative 1.94. We can just subtract these two to get the change. Now just know that your change is always supposed to be positive. So even if you, you know, swap these and you get a negative answer, just make it positive. The delta TF should always be the absolute value. So we know that we have this number. So the first thing we're going to solve for is the molality, because we don't know that. And maybe that will unlock you know, some information that we can get to find the molar mass. So maybe I'll put it over here. So we have 1.94 equals the KF, which we found from the textbook 1.86 times the molality times one, because it's a non-electrolyte. Anything times one is itself, so no one cares. We could just divide on both sides by 1.86. 1.86, beautiful, that cancels, and 1.94 divided by 1.86, that looks good to me, and I get a molality, right, x equals 1.043. So now I have a molality. Well, how's that going to help me? Well, let's just pull up the molality formula. The molality, and maybe what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this. We could bring this down a little bit just to have a little bit more room. Molality equals the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. Huh, moles with moles. Maybe that's the connection. If that's what we're trying to solve for, I have to have the molality and the kilograms of the solvent. Well, good thing because we just found out the molality, 1.043. And let's see, do we have the kilograms of the solvent? Remember, the solvent was the H2O. Oh, they gave us 80 grams. So that's something. Maybe I'll just put it over here. 80 grams of H2O. In order for the formula to work, I have to have it in kilograms of H2O. But grams to kilograms, that's dividing by 1,000. Similarly, take the decimal, move it to the left three spots. So 0 0.080 kilograms. And now we got this number. Let's solve 1.043 equals the moles on the top. So I'll just call that X and then divided by the kilogram 0 0.080. Cross multiply. Ooh, that's going to clash a little bit with the colors. So let's make it blue. So I'm just going to take the number that I found out before this times 0 0.08, right? Was it 80? It was 80. Okay, we're almost there. We found out that now we have 0 0.0834 moles. So molar mass, grams over moles. Way, way from the beginning, we said that we had the 12.0 grams, and now we just found out that we had 0 0.0834 moles. So let's divide, and that is the answer. 12 divided by this number. Bada bing, bada boom. 
point eight. Uh, I guess two sig fig, uh, three sig figs, right? So maybe one forty four. One forty four grams per mole. And that is the final answer. Box it off. We are done. That's the molar mass. Okay, what'd you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Tell your classmates, tell your friends. We just want to get the word out there that this channel exists. Free education for all on YouTube with me, Christina. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard. Always keep learning. Good luck on those tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you guys, all right? And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye.